Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. What any ava? Oh. Me, can you hear us? Go to me, Ava. Yes, sir. Oh, me. me, you can go ahead and play if you want. Yeah, I can try it. Yeah, come here. Oh, what are you doing? Mama, me, I think me YouTube me, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and play for us. Uh, Manjula, shall I give the host to her? Yes, yes, yes. Please, Dr. Diva. Uh, Adam, till Manavde, Adam comes. Uh, can you guys keep the host to yourselves because? Uh, once I start this video, if I move my cursor even a little bit, uh, the uh, borders and everything uh, becomes visible. Okay. Um. Um. Let's. Um. Uh, because I'm coming from my tab, I don't know if my can uh, make other people host and co-host. Uh, Harita, can you try? Uh, sure, madam. Okay. Um. The Dr. Pita, can you give uh, me the? Can you make Harita the?
progress. Okay, um, on behalf of the Department of Chemistry, 
I would like to welcome all of you for the Inspire Seminar Series. First, let me reveal the origin of the Inspire Seminar Series. I was looking for ways that we could enhance a strong research culture in our chemistry programs from the general degrees to the postgraduate level degrees. I had this idea from a long time, but I never thought I would be able to bring this to happen this fast. I'm so proud to say we have a very strong young workforce in our department. Thanks to them, especially to Dr. Vajira Seniviratna, Dr. Manjula Vijaysingha, and Dr. Melanie Thomas. We are here today to have its first session. The Inspire Seminar Series is initiated with the main intention of encouraging our students to unearth the scientists hidden in them. Distinguished scientists from all around the world are invited to speak. So let me first reveal the meaning of this logo. The letter P represents pioneers of the respective field of chemistry and the letter R represents students in the receiving end. The font colors on P and R maroon and yellow represent the colors of the University of Pera Denis. The simple letter I in between P and R represents lighting up a candle which resembles dissemination of the knowledge. This is thought to illuminate all our student community by giving them direction and knowledge and the motivation. The title of the first letter I is replaced by Rutherford's atom. There is a famous benzene ring on the edge of the tassel of the graduation hat. These symbolize the central science chemistry of which we explore together as a fashion. Other letters N, S and E, though not made prominent, will represent empowering students to become successful and noble graduates, which is the expected outcome of this effort. United under this logo, the participants will inspire their peers and colleagues to reach new avenues in science. Next, it's a great honor for me to introduce our chief speaker today, Professor Rajapaksha. Professor Rajapaksha is a senior professor in chemistry with 37 years of service at the University of Pera Deni. He obtained his BSc special degree in chemistry with the first class honors from the University of Pera Deni, and he received his PhD and DIC in photoelectrochemistry of colloidal semiconductors from Imperial College, London. He has over 200 research publications and yeah. several patents and has research collaborations with some of the leading research groups in the UK, USA, Germany, Japan, Norway, and India. His age index is 29 at the present. He has received many awards for his contribution towards science, including presidential awards for science publications, NSF Sustrade Awards, NSF Award for the Best Research in Physical Sciences, and most importantly, the CVCD Award, the most prestigious award a Sri Lankan scientist can obtain once in the lifetime in the year 2014 in recognition of excellence in physical sciences. He currently works as a nanotechnology consultant to many industries, including ATG, TJL, LTL, Bogal Graphite, and etc. as you can see here. Professor Rajapaksha is also a fellow of the National Academy of Sciences, Sri Lanka, and a fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry, and a member of the American and the Sri Lanka Associations for the Advancement of Science. Next, let me brief what he is going to talk today. In his discussion, Professor Rajapaksha would provide an account of some of his excellent research projects, including the conversion of local graphite to expanded graphite and graphene, and the 
conversion of epavel graphite to pure hydroxy apatite nanocrystals for bio prosthetic applications his research collaboration with industries will also be elucidated to shed light on the commercialization of research output professor rajapaksha is a researcher at the forefront of the fight against the covid-19 pandemic in sri lanka excuse me just i'm really sorry about that uh, professor raj can you hear me yes ma'am yes, okay right. yes Why it's not seen here? Something is wrong. Okay. okay professor rajapaksha is a researcher at the forefront of the fight against the covid-19 pandemic in sri lanka owing to the surge of covid-19 there is a dire need for functional low cost what is going on uh, reusable and eco friendly face mask across the globe his novel innovation respiron 1990 so i hope you can see this can you see this yes madam we can see okay so that professor rajapaksha just has involved with some novel innovation the respiron nano av99 mask has exhibited superior virucidal activity even after 20 washing cycles this discussion provides insight into the design development and manufacturing process of such mass so on behalf of all the uh, the audience gathered here i like to welcome you professor rajapaksha to give us that inspiring talk about what you are just doing so it's over to you sir thank you very much professor manohde for this very kind and very long introduction i'm so happy that uh, uh, the our young staff members have done a wonderful job here and it's really professional and could you chain the host to me please so that i can share my yeah uh, i want to share yeah one minute please ah please Hi. Can you see my presentation now? Not yet, sir. No, wait. I'll share it with you. How about now? Uh, yes, sir. It's yeah. We can see. Hi, it, then. It's it's really uh, an honor and privilege for me to actually present this first. Uh, lecture in the this novel inspire series and uh, this is really a, a very good uh, 
initiative by, by our young, uh, the newest uh, head of the department, Professor Mano Devi, and my fellow staff members to help our students guide on how to proceed forward in science and technology. And in this country, of course, I mean, science is uh, neglected by parents, teachers, but I mean, that is very unfortunate. In other countries, of course, I mean, science is the preference because you have no limits, sky is the limit. You can go to anywhere. You can go to NASA, you can go to FDA, you can, you can, you can even go to other planets. So, I mean, if you are a scientist, uh, your, uh, your scopes are uh, limitless. So let me go into my presentation. I'm going to talk on improving national economy through commercializing research output. So in this talk, uh, yeah. I'll just brief you on the top universities of the world according to ranking. Sir, so can uh, you please go to the view mode? Uh, can't you see it now? Yeah, yeah, you have to click that, yeah. Right, yeah. Top 10 universities according to the QS ranking in 2021. And first 10 uh, is uh, MIT in USA, Stanford in USA, Harvard USA, Caltech USA. So first four in the USA, Oxford UK, ETS Zurich Switzerland, Cambridge UK, Imperial College London UK, University of Chicago USA, Likewise, I mean, you see in top 10, you have only US, UK, and one sister university. If I go, if I proceed to a 25th one, you, the one important thing that you can notice is number 12 is National University of Singapore. And uh, number 13 is Nanyan Technology University of Singapore. Singapore has only two universities. They became independent very recently, in only a few years, but the, the both universities are top class universities with ranks 11 to 13. And in fact, there's one in China, one in Hong Kong, uh, two in China, one in Hong Kong among first 25. So this is the plot that I, uh, that I, um, uh, I have draw, uh, drawn from uh, like uh, uh, top universities, uh, top 100 universities, out of which 27 is in US. I mean, if you go through, I mean, we are not aware there, but Taiwan has one and Russia has two, Singapore has two, as I mentioned, France has three likewise, and Mexico, Malaysia has one also. So why so? Then I can't go down. So if I go to Sri Lankan uh, university ranking and research output, I mean, you are very pleased to see that we are within first 2000. Our rank is 1896. And Kalambu follows us and Moratua, Rohuna, Kalani, SJP, Jaffna, Rajarata, and even Sabaragamu uh, within first 5000. To mention you that there are, uh, this is out of 250,000 universities of the world. So within first 2000 is something very important. So we are there within first 5,000, including Sabaragamu. Many, 10 universities in our country are doing well, but not doing very well though. And uh, this, uh, this is what I quote from a paper. Um, they have calculated mean H index of faculties, staff from 1980 to 2014. To, uh, that's, uh, 34 years, and uh, you see Peradini is doing well in agriculture, arts even, although the value is very small in arts, engineering, and more importantly science, the value is the highest among the world. And Kalani is doing well in medicine, and Jaffna is doing well in management. And all others, we are doing very well. And uh, this is something that is very important. Uh, from 1st December 2019 to 30th November 2020, I have counted from nature this, uh, the highest index papers published from Sri Lankan scientists. I'm so pleased to see that within one year, you can see that in physical sciences, there are 60 of them in highest standard journals, including functional, advanced functional materials, 
European Physical Journal. See, likewise, Physical Review Letters is the journal that Einstein used to uh, uh, publish. And Nature Communications and Life Science are also doing well. And uh, within that year, there are, there are six, including science advances and nature. Nature, the, it, uh, the index uh, in fact factory is, is more than uh, 50, I guess. And earth and environmental sciences are also doing well. Uh, in, uh, I mean, environmental science and technology and four uh, other journals. So uh, they have published within one year, four papers in higher standard journals of the world. So that means that our researchers in this country are doing very well. And I won't see that trend continuing. So let me now uh, turn into my research and development to give you some uh, idea about what uh, we have been doing here. And uh, RMGR stands for me here. And uh, with commercializable outputs, I'm going to, I mean, you see that I do research in various areas, but uh, the time is not enough and uh, to and it's not good to uh, talk on all these things. So I have selected a few like conversion of our local minerals to highly value added nanomaterials. That is a very important topic and uh, because uh, to uh, improve our national economy. What we do now is we just, uh, no reloads, we just sell uh, uh, for peanuts of our treasures minerals. But if you can add value, then the value uh, increases enormously, exponentially. And then I'm going to briefly show you custom-made prosthesis that we have developed for orthopedic transplants. And then uh, I will go into this industrial collaborations and the, the present, uh, uh, the invention on this uh, novel face mask. And uh, for you, uh, this, this is how I entered into my research. As soon as I came back in 1991 from UK, I started to collaborate with the Sri Lanka's best, like what he calls Sri Lanka Einstein, Professor Keith Tenkor, and Professor Ilay Peruma. Then, uh, then my peer, saying a colleague, Professor Chandani, those days Dr. Chandani and myself were the youngest in the department. And my teacher, Professor uh, Bandar, uh, in physics, Professor, uh, uh, this is um, this and I, Professor Karim, and then Michael is Professor Andre uh, Vikram Singh. Uh, those days, Dr. Andre Vikram Singh, Dr. Uh, Varanja, and Professor Tenakon, one of my teachers. And uh, likewise, I mean, you can see, uh, I used to uh, start, I started my research uh, activities by, first by collaborating. I mean, uh, when you join as a young staff member, it's not that easy to attract research grants. So best way is to collaborate with seniors and apply for research grants so that you are a member, then you show your colors and then you can become independent. Once you become independent, you can uh, collaborate with young staff members. You see Professor Kumar, Professor Pitavala, Professor Parakram Karnath, engineering faculty. This young man is Professor Sanatta Rajapaksa of Molecular Biology, Professor uh, Jayanta Rajapaksha, uh, then of course, I mean, you have, this is uh, Professor Tusi, uh, Tusita of the Allies. Uh, these are, uh, they are my students actually now here. And then medical doctors like uh, Dr. Suravira and engineers, uh, so, uh, all this in engineering faculty and our uh, faculty. And then we, you help your young, uh, you are actually, most of these are my students who are now faculties in various universities, this professor, uh, professor Ajit Therat is a professor of uh, physical chemistry at Rajarat University. Likewise, so then I collaborate with my young uh, young uh, fellows so that I can bring them up. So that is the way it should go. And of course, I mean, I had this uh, collaborations with uh, foreign uh, universities from UK, starting from my like uh, uh, father in science, that is uh, uh, Professor John Albury, my supervisor, and then I worked with him for three years as a postdoc and several others in UK. And USA, I started with my own batchmate. He's a distinguished professor of inorganic chemistry, uh, Professor uh, Rasika Dias, and many others. These two, uh, this is one of our students now working in National Rene Renewable Energy Laboratory, NREL. It's one of the highest standard uh, national labs in UK. So I'm collaborating with these two uh, scientists now. From Japan, I collaborate with four scientists. And from Norway, uh, this, I collaborated with two of our uh, 
our expatriate scientists, uh, Professor Avirajan and, uh, the, and uh, his friend here. And uh, so this collaboration, not only within the country, collaboration outside the world, uh, outside the country, in the world is also very, very important. And uh, for the mineral conversion project, you see I have collaborated many, many in different, different departments. See, computer scientists, uh, medical doctors, and then engineers, biologists. So we need all these uh, uh, disciplines there. So this is, uh, we have converted our uh, graphite into expanded graphite. You might have seen in the, and graphene products, seen in the television these days, television news and newspapers that, uh, Due to this unexpected disaster, uh, the our coastal areas there, uh, not only coastal areas, air, water, and the land, even uh, are highly polluted due to this express well shift uh, burning. So what we have done is we have developed uh, already uh, uh, expanded graphite. Graphite is structured just like a card pack. Imagine card pack uh, with several cards, or one on top of the other, like millions of cards with distance between the two very, very small in nanometer scale. But if you can pull these cards up uh, to increase this distance, then you can you have enormous area in between the two uh, consecutive cards. So that is what is called expanded graphite. So then once you delaminate these, uh, these uh, layers one by one, so single layer is called graphene. Graphene is the material with highest electronic conductivity, highest thermal conductivity, suitable for uh, the next uh, computational uh, uh, and quantum computing and optoelectronic uh, many devices. And this expanded graphite, we have a patent for production as well as its application uh, as, as a material to recover or clean oil spills and recover that oil. And then this uh, ilmenite we have converted together with uh, with uh, uh, Professor Parak, uh, Professor uh, Rohan Chandrajit of geology, and uh, Professor Udavat uh, was one of our students. Now actually is the is is the deputy uh, UGC chairman, uh, vice chairman. Uh, he was a professor of uh, Sabarangam University, senior professor there. And we have converted this our ilmenite into pure titanium dioxide nanoparticles. Uh, for the first time in the world, 100% pure, TiO2, uh, 1 to 2 ratio. And with uh, like 170 degrees, that's 170 degrees compared to 1,000 degrees that is normally required with concentrated acid. Here we use dilute HCl and 170 degrees. You can see that you can make phase selective uh, at different temperatures. When you treat at different temperatures, we can, uh, we can prepare different, different phases and different, different morphologies. And this is something uh, that we have been doing during, uh, we started to do during this, uh, uh, the war that, uh, uh, that uh, we had uh, a few years back, so uh, some years back. And then I happened to go, uh, go to this uh, uh, orthopedic unit of our Peradini Hospital, where Dr. Suravira is one of my friends. And I had a small uh, pain in my ankle and he took x-ray and found out that there's nothing there, but his ward was full of soldiers, uh, those who with shattered bombs due to bomb blast and various things. So he wanted me to take round. I said, no, no, I can't stand. Uh, I can't uh, even uh, observe these things. So what I can do is I can help you. So how can I help you? He said, uh, Better make a prosthesis. Prosthe uh, being a mass man, I didn't know what this medical term is. So I took two prosthesis and did uh, x ray fluorescence to find out that they made one is made of uh, stainless steel, the other one is uh, from uh, titanium alloy 90% titanium, 6% uh, aluminium, and 4% vanadium. Said, okay, we form a group and make this prosthesis. So we made these prosthesis, and this is one of those prosthesis. I mean, your body doesn't like this foreign material. So we have resembled these materials to uh, the structure of bone by coating uh, the, the material that is in bone. These are hydroxyapatite nanoparticles. And then uh, this uh, first prosthesis was uh, uh, transplanted in this 19 year, uh, so, uh, uh, sorry, in those days, a uh, 12 year old girl who met with an accident and broke her ankle. So we made this prosthesis and transplanted in her after getting ethical clearance all. And she was back to uh, normal. Before that, she could not go to school. 
but now she has done a level also in science i think she passed a level also she got eight is for uh, for all levels if we didn't do that she could now done, done any of those things and then there was a man with a massive cancer in his uh, his, his bone so then uh, when he was admitted uh, dr suruvira called me and uh, we went there and he said only uh, solution is amputation unless you make a prosthesis so we took the challenge because these orthopedic uh, surgeries take long hours like 8 7 8 9 hours so by the time we made the prosthesis not the uh, with one micro accuracy like this but this is 55 year old man so we prevented amputation doctors took the uh, cancer out and he's still alive so this 2 uh, minute video will show you all about that Please enjoy. This is that group. Vice Chancellor, they are stairs in the middle. That's that cancer. See the cancer?
I think that that explains many things. And uh, this uh, theme song, actually, my wife wrote it from Niraja Paksha. Can any of you guess uh, who is singing this? Praswana Devi? I can't hear the song, sir. You couldn't? No. Others couldn't hear either? No, we couldn't hear, sir. No, we couldn't hear. Uh, that will take another uh, two minutes. Uh, I will. Uh, that is high. Uh, I'll play again. Can you see it at least? We can see it's running, but, but we can't hear the sound. You better increase the volume, sir. Uh, I increase the volume to the highest. So, so you have to include the sound sharing option when sharing the window. So you have, to, you have to stop the sharing and when uh, you when you start sharing again, there is an option called include sound option in the Zoom window before sharing. Is it, I mean, can you do it from that end? Uh, yes, sir. No, sir, I cannot do it from here. You have to stop the sharing and start sharing again. Then start sharing, sharing again. Okay. Yeah, then start pop -up. sharing again. In that pop up window, there is a tick you have to enable call include sound. Uh, you, you have to have that uh, video separately, you mean? No, no, no. So when, when the so I, I can share it again, right? No, no. Video. You, before you start the sharing, there is a small tick in the pop up window, sir. Not here. In the Zoom. I'll stop share. And then, well, I think if I take a little bit more time, I don't know. So before that, what I had to do? When you click the start share, screen share button. Yeah. You will get a pop-up window. In the pop-up window, there uh, is a small uh, tick. You have to enable very bottom share sound. Share sound. Share computer. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, right, now share. Let's see, oh, good. Can you hear now? Yes, oh, yes thank sir. you oh. for digging. <laughs> I'll start from the Kill it. 
So, my wife brought it actually to, because there were more than 300 children with what's called brittle bone disease. Their bones have no proper structure, nanotechnological architecture. So, their bones are susceptible to breakage. I mean, they are not strong enough. Just if you just turn your fingers, bones break. They can't lift their bodies up. So that is a real shame. There are more than 300 uh, uh, children in this country. So we wanted to make this, uh, do some solution. There's no solution for that. So uh, our group was able to, uh, to suggest and develop a solution that is what is called telescope prosthesis we developed. So to uh, get some funding, actually, we used this song and then we went to industries and then the industry is very happy to give funding. So we were able to develop this prosthesis. We have transplanted two prosthesis, but of course this is somewhat successful story, but it didn't go beyond because we could not find an industry uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, support us to develop these things because the capital involved is uh, very large. So therefore this is a project where we have done some service to the country, but Beyond that, I mean, if you can develop these things, prosthesis are important. I mean, every day there are so many road traffic accidents nowadays. And also, um, even during the war, I mean, road tra traffic accidents uh, um, uh, had more uh, casualties uh, than uh, war casualties. So likewise, I mean, this is important for the country, important for the world also. We could develop our uh, national economy, we could have done it, but unfortunately we could not find an industry, but uh, we keep trying now that four cities also there, hopefully if any any other uh, foreign industry or anything uh, is willing to help, uh, collaborate with us, we can go forward. So I'll go to next one, this is uh, uh, that one. And then more importantly, as I said, uh, so this is a very important project, but uh, we could not go beyond uh, uh, some success for the, the development of, uh, to start an industry. So what you have to do is if you, I mean, the universities and research institutes in Sri Lanka produce large numbers of research outputs. They are confined to the thesis and more, uh, most uh, for, uh, at most to, uh, standard journal articles, not beyond that. So the way forward is to, uh, to uh, collaborate with industries. 
So I will show you how to do it. So I started my collaboration with uh, ATG Industry. This is Mr. Mendes is the R&D director. He came uh, behind me for about one year to the department, trying to convince and take me to uh, their industry to help. So I, at the uh, beginning, I didn't like it. But then when I went there, of course, I really enjoyed it. We could do a lot of things to uh, develop their industry. So this industry uh, is, is a glove industry. Uh, especially, they make this Maxilflex uh, gloves for uh, industrial gloves and own 4% of the world glove market. And then we were able to introduce uh, novel functionalities like super hydrophobicity, uh, that means uh, water repellence, stain resistance. So uh, even if you put a stain, that just like the lotus leaf I'll show you later, the stain will not stick onto the... Then antimicrobial property, anti-static property, uh, touch screens. Uh, with, uh, with gloves, we can operate. If you make it slightly conducting, like conductivity like 10 to the 6, uh, 10 to the minus 6, one uh, mega ohm resistance, like uh, if you have that conductor, that is enough to write, uh, to use uh, on touch screen and also to operate uh, this uh, anything like, uh, so So that conductor, we have, uh, I mean, this, we have to be careful. These clouds should not be highly conducting to get electrical shocks, but conducting enough to make them uh, suitable for, uh, uh, I mean, while you are working, uh, you can operate your tele uh, cell phone likewise using these gloves. And also now these days, actually, we made this antimicrobial gloves, uh, particularly uh, with our formulation, so that uh, the glove can kill this uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus. And then also I, I worked on this uh, fluent treatment and developed advanced technologies, saving several billions a year to the industry, to the country. And then I'll quickly move on to Lanka Transformers Limited. So this is uh, Prabhat. Uh, Prabhat was one of our kind of special uh, degree graduates uh, about uh, 15 years ago or so. And uh, the Prabhat uh, actually contacted me. They had their smudge. You know what they do is they, they make transformers uh, uh, for the electricity board mainly, but they do galvanizing for many other uh, industries. So, so when these iron bars uh, were given to them, what they do is they, uh, they put them, the large iron bars, uh, immerse in HCl solution. So you basically, iron oxide, you dissolve in HCl to make iron chloride. And then cleaned iron bars, you put in uh, the molten zinc so that uh, you make zinc layer. That is what is called galvanizing. So in that process, you make, a large amount of iron chloride and zinc chloride. They are very good materials for making nano, nano materials. So iron, using the iron chloride, we were able to make magnetite and hematite nanoparticles, which have very important properties, antimicrobial properties, and magnetite is magnetic. So, so you can use for many magnetic applications. And also you can make these uh, bricks, using this, uh, this solid uh, sludge and colored bricks like these things for uh, paving uh, even roads and uh, like, I mean, these highways, they are very strong. So we can make these bricks. So, and uh, this antimicrobial uh, uh, paint, that uh, powder that we made, hematite and different, different colors, we have mixed with the standard base. And then uh, we coated that on, uh, painted that, that on a COVID-19 quotes of of uh, home Agam hospital uh, in the first wave so that i mean uh, the there were uh, i mean the the risk of spreading the disease was minimal then and uh, there were no actually deaths from that hospital those days and then vocal graphite is another industry where we collaborate a lot so these days actually you might have seen that we made this expanded graphite very special expanded graphite that is typical of this, uh, the, nowhere in the world has that type of material. In fact, actually only five countries in the world uh, have uh, this uh, vein graphite. Sri Lanka is one of them. We are selling it from 1980s, uh, from the Second World War in, onwards, but other countries are not even touching. But uh, this, what we did was we used, uh, they are reject, they are, graphite is in the veins. We use this rejected graphite and we made a special solution 
So the rejected graphite is graphite that is uh, stuck on uh, on the stones uh, in the in the veins in the uh, in the in the massive uh, like rocks. You have this uh, graphite. So when when you break this, uh, when you mine it, so this uh, rock pieces, stones, you do throw. So these uh, stones have graphite attached to them. So with our solution, we can delaminate and take that graphite, and we can take a stone as well for other purposes, construction purposes. This graphite, we expanded their structure, and that is uh, nowhere in the world has such a superior expanded graphite because we can even levitate a train. The, the, the magnetic levitation property is also there. So this graphite is the one that is uh, that has from one gram of this expanded graphite, you can uh, it can absorb 120 grams of uh, uh, oil. So therefore, I mean, for one gram, 120 grams of oil. So that uh, absorption capacity is, is very high. Normal expanded graphite has only 60, half of that. Uh, Biochar has 3.6 uh, to 6.3 gram per gram. So compared to biochar, it's 20 times good. And then, of course, I mean, if you go to our nano lab, you see that this Professor Bandar there, uh, Harsha is uh, sponsoring, and Professor Pemrath used to be there. These students, they are working there, making this zinc bromine flow batteries to store solar energy. Uh, so we are working on these, these things with under many constraints these days. And then TJ Lanka is a is a, uh, a uh, is a textile industry situated in Navisavil uh, Free Trade Zone, and they uh, we collaborated with them through uh, NSF Research Grant Technology Research Grant. They are uh, the, our students did PhD. Dr. Dilan uh, Rajapaksha is in America now, and Dr. Charit uh, Anuruddha is in Sri Lanka, uh, and. Uh, also, two other students, uh, they are currently working, including their uh, uh, like uh, printing press manager, uh, Mr. Soma Sari, uh, is, is an engineer passed out from Patubad, uh, uh, Morato University. So he's also doing PhD with me. And we are uh, we have developed uh, super hydrophobic, stain resistant, antimicrobial, anti-peeling, and anti-static. Uh, um, uh, textiles for more than six years. Actually, we were just about to sign an agreement with them for making antimicrobial uh, textiles. So we were supposed to go to UK, London to sign that agreement. Unfortunately, COVID prevented it. But then once uh, this uh, training that we, we, uh, we had was uh, very useful when this COVID problem came, because we know how to make this super hydrophobic, that means water repellent uh, textiles, micro killing textiles uh, and uh, also textiles that have very good uh, ability to absorb carbon dioxide and moisture and remove them. So, so these textiles uh, we have been working for years and years, uh, six years, so that I mean we had the knowledge. So then once this COVID problem came in last year in March, so I could not stay at home. I, said, I thought, okay, I must get some uh, uh, permission. So I, I've talked to many people, including uh, the DIG, and then somehow I got uh, this uh, permission and went to the lab and got uh, permission for my students. And we started to work on this uh, novel face mask that I'm going to concentrate on now. So, so this is uh, this video. Uh, I think now uh, you. This video shows you the super high velocity of textile. So normal textile is a good one. Stick. Now stay in there. Yeah, it's the next 
style made up uh, behind the COVID uh, made uh, it. And it is so normal. Uh, and you could die. Die doesn't go to physical research lab. Because it is a stain resistant. Untreated and treated the style. You see that this is this this is a jersey material with so many folds. But if you and the small part we have made uh, small parts we made uh, spider we made the big one is not and the small the, when you put these in the every eye it goes only to this uh, sorry so the big one is spider the big small parts are not so rather you put there in big one it doesn't like big one the uh, big one doesn't like water all the water droplets remain as yes and if you touch it it goes to uh, the normal part. These two are normal plastic. And big one is a reason. See, you try to press it and go uh, there or stay in different light to go there. So that knowledge was very important for us to further use. Even chemical resistance. We are putting this as uh, this uh, chemical chloride solution to PRL. And VRL doesn't like this color, so the right solution doesn't go there. And now I go to my last topic on this Respiron Nano AV99. I think I have a little bit of time, yeah, only uh, seven minutes or so. Uh, so this is the group. Actually, it's myself. This is Dr. Chamin Deherat, consultant radiologist. Yeah, of uh, uh, Pity Hospital. He was assigned when this COVID problem came. Uh, I mean, doctors were helpless because they even, uh, this is what you call N95 masks were not there. N95 is a polypropylene, one time usable mask. So that N95, and it is, I mean, there are a lot of problems with that. It is. It doesn't have any antimicrobial property. It only filters at least 95% of uh, uh, of 300 nanometer particles. That is what all what it is doing. And then because of its shape, uh, this, uh, the exhaled air can remain in front of your face. And then uh, the, the, there is a possibility for uh, the carbon dioxide ri rich air uh, to remain there so that uh, you, can, uh, you will be inhaling the carbon dioxide rich air. That is not good. Uh, and uh, so therefore we wanted to make a reusable and also enamel friendly material. So this doctor called and uh, joined us and then I got my students to work on these things. And these are all our students here. And uh, so this is, uh, this will tell you more so this is. Respiron AV99 is an environmental friendly, biodegradable, low cost, reusable and antimicrobial face mask with water and blood repellency and stain resistance. It also repels and destroys any aerosolized viruses or bacteria. In this multifunctional face mask, the target has been to reduce both the waste burden and the impact on the environment. As such, cotton, a commonly available natural degradable fabric material, has been used in three layers, nanotechnologically modified individually, to have unique inherent properties. The outer layer cotton fabric is super hydrophobic to repel any aerosolized viruses and microbes as well as blood or any other water-based stains comparable to a lotus leaf shedding water. Any microbes penetrating the outer layer will reach the nanotechnologically modified middle layer with multimodal antimicrobial activity. Micro and nanoparticles are used to partially block the pores of the woven cotton fabric via chemical bonding to a level of 300 nanometers resulting in nanometric range filtration. The adjustable ear loops ensure tight fitting to the face of the wearer. A unique mask design and a metal or plastic nose plate addresses the problem of air escape at the nasal bridge. The innermost layer is made up of 100% hydrophilic cotton to absorb carbon dioxide and moisture 
present in the exhaled air. This face mask can be reused even after 25 cycles of washing or disinfection at least for a period of one month. The nanoparticles used in these masks are safe in a wide range of applications including medical and cosmetic industry. High airflow tests and wash cycles have proven that the chemically bonded nanoparticles are stable and do not detach from the fabric surfaces. The mask has medical grade characteristics with high resistance to flammability, satisfactory results in differential pressure tests for breathability and is highly resistant to blood and fluid permeation. So I'll quickly go through these steps. Uh, this is a three-ply face mask made of modi nanotechnologically modified cotton. The uppermost layer is super hydrophobic cotton, just like you saw, just like the lotus leaf, any waterborne particles will be repaired. By any chance, if the virus penetrates, then we have the middle layer. We have blocked this uh, pores of the cotton using actually titan dioxide microparticles and on which we have chemically attached. These are titan ducts and uh, microparticles are chemically attached to make sure that they don't detach from the, uh, the cotton. And also we chemically attach uh, zinc oxide nanoparticles, just like the stars you saw, with very sharp blades capable of mechanically disrupting, cutting these spike proteins of the viral end of this. Uh, uh, you see this uh, in the virus also has a uh, sphere and a lot of the uh, spike proteins coming um, outwards. You can cut these, uh, uh, these bars and also cut the envelope and destroy. That is one action, actually, zinc oxide has five, four other actions uh, by, uh, by which you can kill bacteria and viruses. And the, um, the innermost layer is hydrophilic cotton with improved wicking and evaporate. Wicking means it takes water and uh, two channels and quickly uh, take out and then allow this water to evaporate. Not only water, carbon dioxide also. So this is, see, this is blood we have put. So blood also stays as, like this uh, without uh, penetrating and uh, uh, just like in the water, lot of sleep. So how do you measure this super hydrophobicity is by measuring what is called the water contact angle. This angle, if it is a sphere, this contact angle is 180 because it touches uh, the surface by only one point. But if it is between 150 and 180, that is super hydrophobic. You will see that up to 20 ocean cycles is super hydrophobic. Even up to 35 ocean cycles is uh, hydrophobic. It's not because these materials are chemically uh, detaching, but when you, uh, this is due to wear and tear, uh, the small pieces from the top layer can, uh, can mechanically detach. A little by little, that happens. That is why uh, with washings, but up to 20 washings, we, uh, we make sure that it has this super hydrophobic property up to 25 washings. You see that uh, 100, uh, 100 uh, uh, this this level, uh, they are up to, uh, up to uh, uh, 20 washings and the uh, hydrophobicity retains even up to 35 washing cycles in the standard washing machine. And then particle penetration, we can adjust. This is using uh, the very uh, high-tech microscope that is available in our zoology department in collaboration with them. We uh, we measured this pore size of the, uh, the cotton middle layer cotton fabric as you uh, block this. It, uh, without blocking, it has large pores so that light can go through. As you block, you uh, light cannot go through and you block it completely. So that means that the, uh, the shortest wavelength is 400 nanometers visible range. So it doesn't allow 400 nanometer particles to go through. So uh, the pore sizes are below that, actually below 300. So we can we can improve retention from like, I mean, uh, 20 uh, with this to 30 with that to 70 or even 100 if you want, but then, then at the expense of breathability, if you cover so much, then it's difficult to breathe. So we keep somewhere wherever we want. Surgical mass has like uh, the 20 to uh, 30 to 40 light. 
uh, and N95 has only filtration, then that function 95. And we can have 95. And then, of course, I mean, uh, with this uh, three layer, with these three layers, uh, there is a uh, breathability issue. So uh, we have to improve that. But of course, I mean, 30 to 40 is fine because we make sure that virus doesn't go. Not only that, if you are a patient and the, your, uh, your exhale layer should go through middle layer. So all the viruses in the middle layer are also uh, killed before you put that out. But in, uh, the, in other masks, that function is not there. Because if you are a patient, the, whether you wear a mask or not, these viruses can come out. And with the, actually, we had done these studies uh, uh, when we did these PhDs in color patients. Actually, uh, Professor Sanaktaj was one of uh, the supervisors, and um, um, myself and, um, and Professor Sanaktaj Baksha did these uh, research projects uh, for six years or so. And then we studied this antimicrobial studies, and we found that uh, the other materials can kill both the gram positive and gram negative bacteria, but for these days in the university so close, we collaborated with our medical faculty, uh, the microbiology department, and we developed first time in Sri Lanka this antiviral test also developed with Professor Fasiha, a new gene a virologist uh, in the microbiology department of there. And then we, you see that with the uh, with the quarter of the um, uh, the amount that we use, you can kill this uh, uh, this uh, RSC anti anti uh, virus. 100%. So we made sure that uh, with, uh, I mean, this, with the quote to the amount, we use 3, P, uh, 3 PHR, that 3%. If you use 0.75 also, it kills uh, what you see here is zero. 1.50% remain. Bacterial test also we, we did with Dr. Veranga and Dr. Uh, another senior lecturer there. And uh, then we found that with 3%, uh, even 3%, uh, we can kill all uh, uh, SORS, E. coli, and even dangerous bacteria, Pseudomonas. And if you uh, decrease 1.5%, we can kill uh, SORS, uh, uh, and E. coli, but not the Pseudomonas. But if we can kill Pseudomonas, that is very good because in hospital environment, this is a very dangerous bacteria. And bacteria filtration efficiency measured at ITI, you can see. 99.8 to 99.99 in different samples. So since time is running out, the uh, inner layer is soft inner layer with excellent moisture absorption and begin and evaporation properties. Uh, no carbon dioxide accumulation or re inhalation. And also it keeps a barrier uh, between the treated uh, middle layer and the face. So although materials are safe to, um, they are the material that I use in creams, but still we don't want, want to let this material touch your face. So this uh, this uh, acts as a barrier as well. And it gives you comfort also. It's, it's a 100% it's a pure uh, uh, cotton. And it absorbs the uh, aqueous uh, layers very quickly as you see here. And uh, biocompatibility studies also we have done in collaboration with uh, uh, Professor Jayanta Rajapaksha with uh, four, 20, uh, I mean, not three, but 20 percent, 40 percent like concentrations. There is no significant disorder for mice models. And uh, our respiron nano mask has virus killing activity 100 percent against RSV. And uh, with the uh, with the same amount uh, in gloves, I sent to Imperial College where I can do a SARS-CoV-2 test. They say 99.99 percent for SARS-CoV-2. Actually, uh, then our industry they sent this uh, um, uh, these masks also mass materials to Imperial College to do this uh, test. We will get results. Obviously, I mean we have got this results 99.99 percent. They never say 100 percent because 100 is uh, uh, very tricky uh, uh, legally, so that is why it's called 99.99. Filtration so far 30 to 67, we can adjust to whatever the level. And uh, we have compared all these properties are not there in surgical law uh, in 95 cloth marks. And then filtration is uh, in 95, 84 to 93 as per syntax. And surgical marks, uh, best ones, uh, 53 to 94. 
but usually it's I think that's so filtration at 300 at 30 to 40 this is filtration at larger levels higher level 30 to 40 this is a uh, uh, greater than or equal to 95 percent so these are the properties where breathability is very uh, very very good we measure when you when you have a mask a mask there is a uh, there is a pressure difference. That pressure difference should be very small, like less than four water millimeters per square centimeter. Four water millimeters per square centimeter is very small pressure. That's class one. So our, our one is class one. So N95 compliant with medical standard like that. Growth mass, I mean variable, just the growth. And synthetic blood penetration, there is no blood penetration whatsoever. Likewise, all these properties are good. Uh, so we have done, uh, uh, re after repeated washing, uh, 15 washing cycles, we had an XRD and XRF measurements, and we have data, and uh, we have uh, submitted all these data to NMRA for certification, and uh, there's no change of the amounts from XRF, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide amounts, no change in XRD spectra. And we have developed what is called a nasal mask also, when you are eating, the nose is the one that is to be protected most because virus enters mostly from the nose. You can even use that nasal mask while you are having your dinner. So I don't think we have more time uh, to see a couple of videos, one minute, two minutes. Do we have five minutes to spare or shall I stop? Uh, so you can uh, show the videos, so that will be yeah. okay. Sure. Yeah. This is blood penetration tester that we developed here with our students. And uh, this Niroshan Samrasinghe, he, he, he has a BSc degree, actually he's a senior technical officer in our zoology department, expert in micro, microscopy. So what you are showing is that we are going to put the mask and then, then you spill blood oh, uh, at a rate where the blood comes from a uh, cut uh, vein when surgeon is uh, doing a surgery at that rate. These are the masks that we made in the research level. Now that the shape and everything improved now in the commercial product. Blood is there as a sphere and no penetration. Breathability tester, again, Ruan, he's an expert in computing as well as uh, instrumentation. He did his PH, uh, MPhil with uh, Professor Bandar and myself, developing BET instrument. So this is, uh, he, he developed this all automated differential pressure pressure test to measure breathability. You see our physical chemistry lab is very beautiful, isn't it? So this uh, our breathing rate is six liters per minute. So we make sure even higher rate, like 10. And then with the mask, it goes through that cylindrical thing. And then the computer, uh, then there's a pressure sensor there, takes the pressure readings, as many readings as you want. Like we take 30, 40 readings, and we make sure that they are, they are precise. They are, the uh, 
the readings are very close to each other. That is what mean, was meant by precision. And then we take the average. Average is almost the uh, readings because they are almost the same readings. And then uh, these uh, breathability is within the limit of four millimeter uh, below the uh, millimeter four millimeter per square centimeter. It's a very very small pressure difference. So you don't feel uncomfortable when you are wearing that mask because I mean we allow it to uh, the the best breathability is there because. Uh, the innermost layer absorbs and gives quickly uh, these, uh, the exhaled air out. And then uh, because it is cotton, it, the, the uh, air can go freely. So all these properties are there. And then flammability is another important factor uh, uh, regarding material, particularly if you are wearing. So this is, uh, I mean, polypropylene is flammable. So, so this, uh, if you, when you start, the, the, the time that takes to uh, catch fire is the uh, the quantity that is measured in this, in this. So it should be less than 10 seconds. Ours sometimes goes about a minute. So this one, so this is also actually our students, including this, uh, this uh, our senior technical official, uh, 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 developed this instrument. So all these instruments are in the physical research lab now. And erosion is doing this test now, showing you. So we, when you fire it, how long will it take? So this, so this is the measure time. Now that we can measure time up to three decimal points of accuracy. So it takes more than 10 minutes. Now it answers the level. 20. Twenty-eight point nine, almost twenty-nine. So that is three times better than in mind. And last one. Oh. All right, right, right. Okay. How do I? How do I share again? Last one was actually. Do I have to stop sharing again share or what? Oh, this. So I think you, okay. Huh? Uh, so you can, uh, I think, share again. Yeah, I'm going to only, only last a few slides. It doesn't allow me to do it. Share. Why is that? Go to the last slide and then try to share, sir. Slide share. Open. Where is it going? Stop here. Anyhow, the last slide was on uh, actually uh, uh, before thanking you. Uh, for giving me this opportunity. So this uh, actually we could not have done, uh, gone so far commercializing this unless we had the state support. So once we developed these things over one year doing all these tests, then we contacted the relevant ministry that is a new invention, Dr. Sita Arampala. And we told her that we had developed such a thing and she was amazed and she said, I mean, since we had developed, our part is over. All, uh, now is the commercialization. So best person is uh, the Minister of Trade, Dr. Bandulukunawadana. So she introduced us to the same day, introduced us to uh, the Honorable Dr. Bandulukunawadana, uh, who immediately called us. So the, despite this curfew, uh, we went there. And then uh, he was really shocked to see all this. He said, of, of course, we had done a very good job. Now we need a commercial partner. We were working with TJ, and TJ had more than enough work uh, 
with uh, limited uh, uh, workers there. So they said that unfortunately they could not go forward. I, we said uh, TJ uh, is reluctant to go forward. And then what happens was uh, that then Dr. Bhavan said, okay, we find another. So that is how he contacted uh, uh, Sarasavi Industries. Uh, Sarasavi owns, uh, uh, is the biggest, largest uh, shoe socks manufacturer in the South Asia and owns like 5% uh, socks market of the world. Uh, very trendy uh, socks. And then uh, Mr. Uh, Hemanta Pereira is the owner actually. And he owns another industry called Isabella Limited, but he's a very down to earth person. So what uh, he did was, uh, so now he also came and said, okay, we will go forward. And then we told them and we made these uh, solutions in Isabella. They have, uh, they, I mean, they have very large industrial grade autoclaves, reactors, automatically controlled uh, reactors. We can take resolutions automatically, solvents, everything is there in Isabella. So we make this coating solution at the Isabella and take it to uh, the Lumia uh, in uh, uh, Aduela FTZ, uh, Biagam FTZ uh, to coat. So there we caught uh, the three layers and then, uh, then uh, Sarasav Industries, they make this uh, face mask and then uh, eventually, since it is a, you know, I mean, we had the patent those days because universities were closed and then we transferred the patent right to the university. Uh, university wants the patent right. We are the inventors. And then Sarasavi is our official industry uh, manufacturer. And since it is a university product, we can't sell in the university. So that is how STC, the official uh, trading uh, arm of uh, the trade, trade ministry within the country is a straight trading corporation. So the straight trading corporation uh, is now involved and marks are available with Satose. But apparently, I mean, uh, I get a lot of telephone calls uh, requesting me to give masks because as soon as this uh, mask come to Satose, they disappear, it seems. So we have tried our best to increase the production uh, like uh, 30,000 a day, like, uh, but still uh, it's difficult to um, uh, reach the demand. And also now that I mean, we, are, uh, we have increased the demand, now, uh, uh, the ministry has given permission, uh, actually permission to uh, even sell uh, it uh, in the South Asia. Now I heard that they have like, I mean, they have uh, sold uh, like uh, 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 1 million or no, 10 million, I'm not sure, mass so that the university will get some considerable amount uh, uh, within a week or so. So that will continue. Uh, as uh, more and more masks are produced and sold. And also uh, that uh, uh, then now that, I mean, we purposely, we are not reaching uh, the outside the country for export market because we have to meet with the local demand. We have to protect our people first. Actually, I mean, Dr. Bandhanu has so many large number of uh, like uh, the media con uh, uh, Conversations, uh, media presentations, and then I mean, it's a very uh, the, it's very popular among everyone. But the only problem is uh, the uh, is the limited availability, which we are trying to solve that problem soon. And also, he organized a, a meeting, Zoom meeting, with all the trade ambassadors in uh, the countries where we had diplomatic reasons uh, relations with. So I address all those them. So then they are waiting to get these things, but I said, stop, stop. Uh, we, we should serve our nation first and then we go for others. Anyhow, uh, I mean, if we can produce in large scale uh, required uh, for the, the world market, then that will be a way uh, for improving our national economy. This has been presented before uh, the parliament in front of the honorable prime minister and the other ministers and parliamentarians, and they were very happy. The prime minister declared uh, the, that state recognition is given to this one. And then we, after the Sir Iver Jennings, Sir Pro Professor Sir Iver Jennings uh, had first presentation in the uh, cabinet uh, uh, regarding the need to uh, establish universities about 72 years ago. Uh, from that day onwards, there was no any, uh, 
uh, university personnel uh, has gone to this uh, uh, cabinet and presented uh, any uh, anything so far. But uh, I mean, we had that opportunity recently, and in front of the His Excellency the President, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister, and all the ministers, we presented this, and they got really impressed. And uh, then uh, they are waiting for us to produce more uh, to tap the uh, world market. So that is where the story ends. And thank you very much for giving this opportunity. I think within that short time uh, that I have taken a little bit more, but that is because uh, of the technical problems. I'm sorry about that if, we, if, if, if that made you bored, but uh, uh, then I have presented how you uh, convert your research output into uh, the commercializable products. For that, you need to get state recognition as well as the private industry, particularly capable of handling this. So well, that is very, very important. And uh, I think uh, the, our junior colleagues and uh, uh, the young staff members have got some idea about how to initiate their research career and go uh, in the ladder to the top. Uh, and uh, also for students, it's a very good message that and scientists can do many things. And not only me, all these scientists in our department, in our faculty, in the in science faculties in the country and the world, they are doing enormous amount of research, as you will see in the future. And thank you very much for giving this opportunity. And uh, that is uh, like, I mean, uh, uh, so I'll hand over uh, this stage to Professor Manu Devi also to continue if there's anything more to ask. If you have any question, I'm very happy to answer. Thank you, dear sir. Uh, Professor Rajpaksha will uh, take a few questions from the audience now. You can unmute yourselves and ask the question from sir directly, or you can use the uh, raise hand option in Zoom. You can also type your questions in the chat. Yeah. Professor Gamini, Gamini, this is Rat speaking. Oh, Professor Rat. Rat. Nice yeah. to see you. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I was, I'm really happy that you are doing so well and contributing to the country. This is real inspiration for all young people, uh, the way to go forward. I think you showed it very clearly. I wish you all the best and congratulations to do much, many more things, many more things so that our country, you know, will benefit from your expertise and uh, your contribution. Thank you. So the foundation is from you, sir, <laughs> you and others. <laughs> okay. so the foundation that we get from the university particularly is, is unbelievably good. Yeah. Okay. You are very foundation. modest. You are very <laughs> modest about it. Yeah. <laughs> very modest. Uh, and with that fair. foundation, we can do it. Actually, if you have uh, been watching uh, the news these days, actually, I'm involved in this ship disaster problem also. Mm. Actually, uh, voluntarily, I said I can um, I can do all this testing and I, I can testing in the sense that it is done by NARA, but I I mean, this is legal uh, case in all. So the, all the ministers and the relevant ministers uh, um, and the secretaries, and also there's a team from America, including uh, this uh, uh, Professor Vijay and uh, Professor Naresh, who is going to be the CEO, uh, is going to come as CEO of Slintech. And also our, uh, our uh, Professor uh, of Food Science, what is his name? Professor Samaraji. Professor Samaraji. Professor Samaraji. Samaraji. Professor Samaraji. 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 So we are involved, actually, they want to uh, measure, uh, um, they have uh, uh, like I mean, all the instruments uh, required to measure cations like atomic uh, inductive level plasma, atomic emission, uh, mass spec, uh, they are there. Uh, uh, but uh, they don't have facilities to measure um, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon that must have been uh, during this fire. So uh, the, our water must have been polluted with all this. I, then I made the contact with Dr. Ruchi Fernando, who 
whom you should know actually because he is the one who developed low cost uh, uh, COVID-19 testing kit, uh, which uh, he also, uh, I took him also with the vice chancellor to the uh, president of secretary and he also presented that uh, the, the NMR approval is going to be, uh, he's going to get that uh, next week so that, that uh, with the half the or quarter of the cost of uh, this uh, PCR, you can do the same, uh, the accuracy uh, and the reliability up to the same level uh, with this, just the color change shows you the, whether you are positive or negative. So using this uh, enzyme related reaction. So uh, he has this uh, HPLC with fluorescent detection uh, and that can be used to measure uh, these uh, uh, polycyclic uh, uh, aromatic hydrocarbons. Uh, so I made that contact and then uh, I said, I'm going to help you to do these things. And also, I mean, since this is a legal case as I involved, uh, we, I mean, there should be an expert panel to actually certify the, the results because otherwise, I mean, any good uh, scientist can challenge the results. So I said it's very important to have a panel of expert, experts, particularly chemists in this case, uh, uh, to uh, certify all the results and the results have to be, this is a point source but it goes everywhere with tides and throughout the, the sea around the country so I'm involved in that also, actually, these days. And also we are having this Zoom meetings uh, uh, once a week with uh, the American and Canadian uh, scientists. And then uh, the ministers are also involved. So, and also actually we have developed this expanded graphite. So now that university is closed, so I, uh, we, we, we gave the permission for Strintec to make uh, that in large scale. And uh, the Vogel graphite gave uh, graphite one lorry uh, the Amila, uh, India is against the CEO, Amila sent one lorry full of graphite to uh, Slintec. So they are making this expanded graphite, the very special stuff. Uh, and then uh, putting that in polypropylene, uh, like um, say pillow-like thing or mattress-like thing, just you, uh, in the, I mean, Nara has shipped, so you can go there and put on the oil spill and all the oil, because uh, oil likes, uh, uh, the oil likes, uh, when these hydrophobic material are expanded, but all oil goes in there and then take the, the pillow into the ship, press it and uh, take the oil and put back to the, uh, the patch, another patch and take uh, the, I mean, clean the oil, not only clean, recover the oil. So that is going on, I mean, that, is, that made a very big news in, in many TV channels these days, yesterday and day before. Uh, and that's quite amazing. That's, that's quite amazing. The amount mm -hmm. of uh, oil that you can extract, you know, by this simple kind of procedure. You At see? least one gram of that can extract yeah. 20 grams. 120, Bio you said that? 120. That's only 3.6 uh, to 6.3. Yeah, uh, I see. See, quite amazing. Anyway, yeah. I also wish to uh, thank uh, the head of the department, Professor. Uh, uh, Manava Devi for have initiating this innovative series of lectures and having Professor Gamini Rajapaksa as the first speaker. I think it's quite inspiring. Actually, I got some goosebumps also, you know. Goosebumps means, you know, so the excitement of uh, the, 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 the findings and uh, the value of those findings, how we, the findings are going to contribute to this country and the human in general, humankind. Okay, thank you very much again. For all, I mean, all of you. Thanks. You are welcome, sir. Okay. Hello. Yes, madam. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm Dr. Apana Gunjal from uh, India. So. Hello, Professor Gunjal. Nice to see you. Yeah, there. Yeah. You're joining from India. Yeah, yeah. So He's an very expert nice. in microbiology. Yeah, very nice talk and uh, very uh, great technologies which are developed. Uh, especially I read uh, this also, the oil extraction, which is there because uh, if we see the oil, uh, it is like a uh, major uh, pollution problem also in the waters that are there. So really very nice technology. It's really very good because uh, we need to have the simple technologies cost effective. So, 
that is the major uh, thing which is there also i would like to uh, 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 this covid 19 the mass that are developed so have you started uh, its uh, export to the other countries <laughs> no yet president because we can't meet the demand in local demand even now okay okay <laughs> because okay, i mean okay. <laughs> we thought that we have to protect our own nation first yeah 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 okay so okay thinking okay. about But, our neighbors in india oh, well, yeah. india is having all, also a hard time these days so they are there yeah. i think the minister that i mean no sooner we can produce in enough countries we should uh, next uh, consider india rather uh-huh. than countries okay okay yeah but uh, i think uh, it can be done uh, slowly and slowly yeah we can increase the production yeah because this is a never ending story isn't it this uh, virus now fourth wave has started in the in the west so it's very dangerous so we need to have these things for several years i guess so now that i mean we are just about to manage in the demand local demand so within a yeah. few uh, we would be able to Uh, consider our next door neighbor so we oh. of course i mean uh, rather than sending this to develop uh, the other west west we are considering our region first actually i mean no. our big brother <laughs> next to us okay yeah very nice work sir and very nice to hear you <laughs> uh, very th- thank you very much professor gunjal uh, joining from india uh, Yeah, you are now professor in uh, what is your university and for others i am working in you... dr dy patil arts commerce and science college as assistant professor in the department of microbiology and she has written books on uh, microbiology and also a uh, large number of index papers uh, and many other contributions she is an Are you an editor of a journal also? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Editor of a standard journal also, microbiological journal. Uh, do we have any more questions for sir from the audience? You can also type it in the chat. there are a lot of uh... yes sir there are a lot of comments congratulating you and uh, the work you've done a lot of comments but is there any, yes. is there any question uh, uh, not really sir not so uh, far uh, no questions they are all are just congratulating me yeah. yeah yeah i think sir you explained it very well so i think everybody understood it very well sir Yeah. That's a good compliment. Thank you. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. Do we have any more questions? Uh. Uh. Madam, would um, Professor Manav Devi, would you like to uh, speak a few words? Uh. I think uh, that um, now you are ready for doing that, right? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can go ahead. Okay, if there are any questions, um, on behalf of the Inspire team, let me thank. today speaker our dear sir professor arif ji rajpaksha senior professor of chemistry in the university of peradeniya for that most inspirational talk given sir it was an ideal session to launch the inspire series and you elevated the standard to a very high level we as your students felt very proud to have had the chance to hear your life service life saving research work in detail and i'm confident that it will motivate all the undergraduates and young scientists this will surely provide them direction to achieve their scientific goals i would like to offer our sincere gratitude dear sir for making time for this webinar despite your busy schedule of national service furthermore i'd like to thank dean 
the Faculty of Science, Professor Saluku Parithuaku, for your support from the first day itself. I would also like to thank Professor Manavadevi Kanehenage, Head of the Department of Chemistry, and all the other academic staff members for their guidance. Special thanks to Mr. Lahiru Ekanayaka for helping us resolve technical issues going above and beyond to help us. Last but not least, to all of you who joined today, thank you very much for taking the time to get connected with us. You encouraged us. And I would like, also like to take this opportunity to invite all of you to the next Inspire webinar on 1st of July at 3.30 p.m. onwards. Before winding today's uh, webinar, let me thank again, dear sir, Professor Rajapaksha for adding color to Inspire. Thanks everyone. Good night and stay safe. Good night. Thank you very much for giving me this honor as the first speaker. And it is really a great honor and uh, privilege. And of course, I mean, I'm, I enjoyed uh, talking to all of you and there were a lot of uh, students and many others joined from abroad as well. So the and first, uh, uh, but last but not least, I mean, I'm grateful to you, uh, Dr. Melanie Thomas, for arranging this is to be the Dr. Vajira Senevratna and Dr. who else you know? Manjula Vijayasinghe. And also our uh, head of department, Professor Mano Devi, and all of you. And uh, thank you very much, and have a good evening and sweet dreams for the day. Right? Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir.